Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. We've already talked a lot about the physiology and anatomy of the integumentary system. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about different kinds of homeostatic imbalances. We're going to see a wide range of conditions, starting with this video where we'll look at burns, and then in the next video we'll see more benign things like albinism, moles, also called anevis, freckles, and so on and so forth. So here we're going to talk about burns. And what we're going to see is that there's actually three kinds of burns that are first degree, second degree, and third degree. And of course, as we go towards third degree, we're getting increasing severity and how dangerous it is. So first of all, what is a burn? Now we likely all have some simple understanding of it, but the technical definition is a burn is damage to one or more layers of the skin that's caused by heat, radiation, chemicals, sunlight, or electrical shock. Okay. And there could be some other minor things there as well. And most people, when we think of a burn, we think of by heat, uh, like something like fire. So if you burn in a fire, you get uh, really massive burns all over your body. But there's, of course, other things that can cause that. Sunlight can cause first and second degree burns. Third degree is very rare with sunlight. But also chemical burns. If you work in a lab that has a lot of chemicals or a school lab, you're taking a course, if you get a really noxious chemical on yourself, it can burn you. For example, sulfuric acid. That will burn your body really badly. And different types of burns involve different numbers or layers of the integumentary system, the skin that is. Also burns, generally third degree burns, are the major cause of accidental death. And the actual death from a third degree burn generally is going to be fluid loss and infection. And of course there's some other things there, but these are the most important things. The fluid loss causes dehydration. And the reason you have fluid loss is because now, especially in a third degree burn as we'll see, your underlying tissue, the dermis and the hypodermis, are actually exposed to the external environment. Normally the epidermis protects those underlying tissues from loss of fluid. And so this loss of fluid can produce dehydration and electrolyte imbalances and that can kill you. But also the fact that you have damaged tissue to such a severe extent would cause bacterial infection and that can also kill you. So these two factors right here, and more importantly the first one, are mainly what cause accidental death when somebody has a burn, in particular a third degree burn. So let's now break down the different kinds of burns. The first type of burn we have is a first degree burn, and this is the least severe and least dangerous of all three of them. Okay? It's going to have a recovery time of only three to five days, so this should recover in less than a week. And when someone goes out in the sun and gets a minor sunburn, this is pretty much what they're going to have as a first degree burn. First degree burns only involve the most superficial layer of the integument, that is the epidermis. So the dermis and any underlying tissue like the hypodermis are unaffected in a first degree burn. And with a first degree burn, all you're going to really see is slight redness and pain. Okay? So I think we've all experienced this at one point in our life. We go out in the sun, you get a sunburn, and for the most part that's really just a first degree burn. There's no permanent damage to to this tissue in any way because as it only involves the epidermis, the epidermis has high regenerative capacity and so there's no permanent damage. And other than just waiting for it to pass, the only thing you really should do or can do is just immerse the burned area in cool water. Okay? So a first degree burn is certainly no medical emergency. All right. Now the second kind which is more dangerous than a first degree burn is a second degree burn. Now this type of burn involves both the epidermis and at least part of the dermis. So you've now damaged a component of the dermis. And seeing as you've now damaged an area of the skin, such as the dermis, that has less regenerative capacity as the epidermis, it's going to have a longer recovery time. And a second de degree burn will therefore have a recovery time of anywhere between two and four weeks. So we're talking quadruple to five times, six times the length of time of a first degree burn. And that increased recovery time has to do with the fact that you've now damaged at least part of the dermis. When you have a second degree burn, the skin will blister and it will likely be very painful. And the after effects of this, you can actually see slight scarring, but not the type of scarring you're going to see in a third degree burn. Okay? And also a second degree burn is generally not a medical emergency. Okay? The only one that 
that's listed here that's a medical emergency is a third degree burn. And a third degree burn is a burn that involves the epidermis, the dermis, and even penetrates deeper into the subcutaneous layer. Okay? This type of burn is the most dangerous of the ones listed here, and it requires hospitalization. So therefore, third degree burns are a medical emergency. And typically, you're going to see third degree burns when somebody is burned in fire. Um, that's the most common cause of this. So this over here is an example of a third degree burn. So this is a picture taken from the third Star Wars movie, Revenge of the Sith. And if you've seen that movie, you know that Anakin is burned all over his body by fire that was ignited on his clothes from nearby lava. And you can see clearly here, particularly on his leg, left leg right here, that definitely the underlying tissue, the hypodermis, all that is definitely exposed. And as I mentioned, when you have vascular tissue that's exposed, you have the risk of fluid loss. And so when somebody has a third degree burn, the major things that need to be treated immediately are dehydration and infection. As I said before, the dehydration is due to fluid loss, which can also cause electrolyte imbalances. That's very dangerous. And then also because now you have underlying tissues exposed and no protection from the epidermis, or dermis for that matter, you have increased risk of infection. And so these two things need to be addressed immediately for someone with a severe third degree burn. Additionally, the person who's burned will need additional caloric intake. And why is that? Well, even though the person will never likely heal completely properly, in order to heal at all, you need to regenerate new cells and new tissue. And in order to do that, you have to have protein. You have to have amino acids to make new proteins. You have to have lipids, in order to make new cells, such as plasma membranes, right? And then you have to have carbohydrates as well. So you have to increase caloric intake in order to have all the nutrients available, and that includes vitamins, minerals, and so on and so forth, okay? And also with third degree burns, you're gonna see severe scarring. Another thing that will also be involved is possibly skin grafts, but certainly debridements. So debridement is the removal of damaged tissue. And this droid over here in the back in this image not only was removing clothes that sort of fused to his damaged skin, or lack thereof, but is also removing damaged tissue before they put him in the suit, obviously. Okay, And so debridement is the removal of that damaged tissue. In some cases, they'll require a skin graft just so they can have some appearance of normality. All right. And for the treatment of these burns, third degree burns that is, there are six major things that need to be done. Manage the fluid loss. That's to prevent the dehydration, relieve the swelling, manage the pain, remove dead tissue, which is the debridement process, control infection, that's very important, and then of course, as I mentioned, increase calorie intake. And even with all these things with a, with a third degree burn, uh, the person will probably never heal completely properly. They're going to have some deformities and so on and so forth, um, and it's going to take a long time. There's no time span here because it's going to take a lot longer than a month. Very long time, and they will not heal completely. Okay. There is one other type of burn that's seldom mentioned. It's called a fourth degree burn, and the only difference between a fourth degree burn and a third degree burn is that in a fourth degree burn, pretty much enough tissue is burned away that you can now see underlying bone tissue. That's the most dangerous, and that's why I said third degree was the most dangerous of the ones mentioned here. But a fourth degree burn is kind of an extension of a third degree where you will actually be able to see underlying bone tissue because so much tissue has been burned away. It's kind of an extension of the third degree burn. So again, not a very pleasant topic, but hopefully this made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we'll discuss some more pleasant homeostatic imbalances. Thank you.